A family burial plot now filled, we move on to the denouement of this video game. We push forward to finally figure out what's going on with the alchemists, to find out what is waiting for us on that alchemist island, and uh, we go past Alidora cowering, which is always fun. The bitch that he is, and then you get the great Vanini collection, which if you've been keeping up with the the acquisitions we've been getting in this game, you'll know that that goes towards getting you more things back in the hotel. A lot of good useful tools in there. And I'm really curious to see what they do with that, moving forward with any of this additional support. Like, can you imagine if this game gets like three DLCs? Because you know one of the things that's cool about Team Ninja? Even when Team Ninja make a game that you might not like, they tend to support it with DLC. Like, look at War Long. War Long is a game that I really wanted to like, but I didn't. And they've tweaked it, and they've patched it, and they're supporting it, and they're making it a lot better, which is nice. Because it's a cool game. And it just seems to get DLC every day. DLC 1, DLC 2, DLC 3, more areas, more bosses, more this, more that. And it's just like, dude, that's so cool. And then you get a game that I do like, like this, and I get the feeling we won't get that breadth of, of support. I guess we'll figure it out together. But we are moving now into... A rather kiln-inspired location, which is this, is it the Black Sea? Really interesting zone, this, but there's a, some huge flaws with the thinking of the devs in this one, ladies and gentlemen. So when you're at the end of the game, you should not be picking up Titanite Shards. And if I were to pick up some of the items here, guys, that's what it would give me. That, to me, is a developer that fundamentally misunderstands where we are and the significance of where we've come from. It just does not make any kind of logical sense. And I'm certain the apologists have come up with a law-specific reason as to why they're finding that dog shit instead of something, I don't know, meaningful and valuable. But I would be lying if I didn't say it was mind-boggling that we can be running through the kiln and picking up fucking green blossoms. Even though I love green blossoms. But it's another feather in the shit pile of the problems with this game. And I've spoken about how the, the economy in the game is, is kind of fractured and it doesn't really benefit a player that takes his time to kill things, to explore, to really apply himself. And it's true. Like, you can kill this entire area, you're not going to get that much ergo compared to what you would get if you were somewhere else. And I think that that's not what it should be. There's been evidence of it throughout the whole game too, where You'd think that you would get a lot more ergo for killing things, and then you killed something and you didn't. And it's... It's so key to incentivizing the player to interact with your game, and all it really does is motivate people to run past everything, as you will see me do in this level. Now, this is going to be the most you've seen me run past anything. The less said about that beach we just ran up, the, the better. It's just terrible. And if you die on this fight, which many people do, you're going to have to run all the way from that beach, past those cannons, past those panthers, to, to get to this fellow, who is the Door Guardian. And this is one of the bosses that people struggle with the most in this game, believe it or not. And there's a couple of factors for that. The first one is, if he hits you, he puts a status effect on you without actually proccing it, which is a little cheap. A status known as Shock, which affects your stamina regen. I just finished a playthrough where I was about 50% weight, wearing full armor, and I could not honestly tell you how frustrating I, it was with how much it affected my stamina. Because I've never played this game in anything but lightweight, I am so used to my stamina regen being good that when I played that build, it felt almost unplayable. And it's one of the reasons why I recommend, if you're struggling to gel with this game and it just doesn't make sense, you've got to drop the weight. You've got to get rid of it. It makes your character feel so much more capable and so much more fun. And I know a lot of people aren't going to do that because it means that you, you're going to die really quickly and this game's already really hard. But it just... It makes it make sense to a player that has my sensibilities. But when this guy puts shock on you, it really, really affects a lot of what you do. And if you're already heavy, it's just going to compound a, a pre-existing problem and you're going to have a bad time. Be very careful when he falls down. This has a terrible hitbox. Uh, I'm going to experiment here as well, guys. The gimmick of this fight, if you didn't know, this is a Tower Knight. Attack its ankle, it falls down. Attack its head, it takes massive damage. Only in this fight, you repost its head and it takes massive damage. But I'm going to kill this guy without reposting him at all. I do not recommend that you do this, because it takes a long time, but 
sometimes it's fun to see if it can be done, and it indeed can. This video is hopefully going to show people that this, this boss is not very difficult. He's very manipulatable, which is probably not a word. <laughs> shall, we, shall, we, shall we revise that, ladies and gentlemen? He's very easy to manipulate. <laughs> and you can control him almost exclusively, as long as you don't fall into the category of not being near him. If you let him do his red move, his fury move where he elbow drops and he rolls away, if you stay at full distance, he'll roll towards you and the hitbox on the roll is almost as good as the bear's charge. Which is to say, it's fucking 9-11 times a million. It's horrendous. But as long as you stay close to him and you bait the slams and you bait the punches and you know what to do, there's not really much this boss can do. He has no tricks. The only trick he'll do is when he mixes up his red move, which is a soccer kick that he does. And if you sprint towards the right of the screen as he does it, he misses you naturally. So even then, that move is not very difficult. But the area where you'll have problems is that you have to react to the red move. And if you react incorrectly, you'll lose. Because the one of the red moves, you want to come back on yourself and then move to the side. Whereas the other one, you just want to completely commit to the other side. And that's pretty much the only risk. But the reason people suffer here is because you can't brute force this monster. This monster does not take that much damage when you attack him, so your build doesn't matter. This monster hits harder than almost anything else in the game, so your defense doesn't matter. He puts a status effect on you, which makes your stamina even worse than it already was. And you cannot summon any of your friends here, so you can't use a spectre to help you take him down, because there's no summoning pool. And then when you compound this with parrying this boss really doesn't do that much and parrying him is quite tricky because if you make a mistake he hits like a truck. All of these issues come together to make a, a roadblock for many casual players. And I think he's well designed in that way because he's meant to be guarding the end of the game and he does a surprisingly good job. But most people who have played the game and really understood the systems and are engaging with them, you'll think that this boss is just kind of silly because he doesn't do much. It doesn't do much, it's not that dangerous, you just hit its foot, it falls down, you crit it, it dies. Crit it twice and you've won. But it is funny, isn't it? Because this is the guy who puts a lens on the community. He's the guy that really assesses who knows how to play and who doesn't. Because everyone complaining about this monster, they have put a triangle peg in a square hole and they've got very good at pushing it in. And this guy's here to remind you that sometimes you're supposed to use the correct peg for the correct hole. Even though I'm doing this in, a, in an odd way. But if I can do this like this, guys, you can crit him twice and win. You know, that's meant to be the moral of what this is. This is not me wagging my dick while I play. Because believe it or not, this is not even the worst way you can fight this boss. If you use throwables, it takes even longer than this. Because on my throwable run, it was... Oh my goodness, it was going to take like 30 minutes. That's a low boss fight, dude. I don't do that shit. But it is crazy to think how strong I am and how much he just takes it. Like, this guy can take it. He takes it like nothing else can. I also get a little bit greedy here as well, trying to finish him off. Which is a really bad idea. I don't recommend being this greedy because I nearly get hit by this. And of course it's miles away, but this guy's hitbox is when they want to be. They'll find you. Also, be careful of the caliper on his left leg. You tend to bounce off that, and when you bounce off, the recovery time is large. Anything in this game that gives you that kind of recovery time will get you killed. Now that the Door Guardian is smited, we can use the Alchemist badge, and we can move into the next part of the Abbey. The gift keeps on giving here as well, guys. It is difficult area on top of difficult area on top of difficult area. So hit the Stargazer, and then as we push forward now, we're going to be opening up a shortcut to get to the real part of this sequence. So this is the place where they just decided to throw everything they could at you. You've got an alchemist on a gun. You've got the fist slam carcass, as I called him just then. He's a, a fister, this guy. He loves that shit. And then behind them you have the, the charging big carcass, which is always fun. And I'm going to put some bombs on here to throw at the cannon guy. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to show this just in case you were struggling. You can straight up lock onto that and destroy the machine from a distance. And it's going to make the next part of the climb a little easier. But we need to contend with this guy. And 
I really don't like this monster. This monster tends to cheat me more than anything else in the game because he does empty charges, he does charges that go straight through you, he does charges where he's supposed to hit a wall and then he doesn't. And there's a tricky way of knocking him off here. If you flinch him backwards when he's on this walkway, he just falls and dies. And I wanted to show that because if you're really struggling with him, it's the best way of dealing with him. But if you back up and you get the lock on, you can then get rid of this cannon. And you might suffer with the lock-on a little bit here. There are some options in the menu to change the lock-on. I don't really know what the best option is. I, I think it's nice that they gave us the choice, but there's times where the lock-on in this game is really bad. And I think it's interesting that in this last month, we've had two Souls-like games. Both of them have had questionable lock-ons. This game, however, it's 98% solid. And then there's that 2% that can be really frustrating. Whereas in Lords of the Fallen, that game has quite possibly one of the worst lock-ons I've ever used. I have never fought my controller more than I fought it in that game. And I just don't know how you make that. But then again, the movement in that game, the rolling in that game, the attacking in that game, I just don't know how you do any of the things they did in that game. It's That game is a study of the insane. I just don't understand it at all. And you can't patch it either because it's foundational. You'd have to rip the whole thing out and redesign it, and they're not doing that. They didn't even notice. But be careful of this carcass torso here, guys. This is one of those areas where, because there's a lot of walls, the tendency is to hit the walls and screw yourself up. They did it intentionally. And the reason we killed the cannon guy is because he will shoot you when you walk up this area. And it can be really awkward to, to get away from it. But he's not there, so he can't do it. And then up here, there's going to be some of the, the fist slamming guys. There's going to be a couple of big dogs. And then there will be the alchemist that was on the gun. And I do think it's a shame that we can't use those guns. I really wanted to be able to use the cannons and kick some ass, but just that's just not the game they were making. But this guy fires really quickly. You want to be super careful with these fellas. I'm just going to puppet string him. It's the safest thing to do. Also, if my voice sounds strained, guys, I do apologise. I've just streamed all week. Trash my throat. It's already trashed. I'm under the weather. It's affecting my throat. And now I'm doing this and I uh, I definitely feel like the back of my throat has, has done a mud runner. But we're going to grit our teeth and get on with it because this is lies of P. We don't choose the easy way. We choose the hard way. And then at the end we feel the sense of satisfaction that everyone's obsessed with. And speaking of obsessions, I don't really get this. Two of these enemies on this bridge. That's that's the area. So yeah, we're going to run past them. I'm going to climb this ladder and hit the Stargazer. And it's a good idea to kill those guys because you can have that box. But I'm not that interested. At this point, I've already got what I need. But I must tell you, when I got to the top of this ladder, I did then start to try and do plunge attacks on those monsters. And they do walk away quite quickly. So you've got to be quick to try and do it. And the fall is fatal, but it's totally worth it. But now we can move through one of the more frustrating areas of the Abbey. This whole sequence, to me, seems mean and unnecessary. They have this architecture, they have this law going on about this place. This really, really specific place to the story of the game. And then they just fill it with everything they can to be annoying. Like, why are these sacks of respawning decay here? You know, why is it just a million of these wishkins, as I call them? Like, what is going on? And don't do this, by the way, guys. Because he favours his right hand, you can't really throw very well here unless you angle it better. And I don't have any of the cogs I usually throw, which are really good at hitting these. So the best thing to do is just pop one of the resistance samples and then just run for the ladder. And if you do it correctly, you should be okay. But be careful of this monster here. His entire purpose is to push you off. If he hits you, he knocks you really far as if you've got ice on your feet. And then the, the kin guy tries to grab you on the ladder almost every time. He was a bit slow then, so he got okay. And then through this zone, there's going to be a bunch of the decay guys. And there's going to be some of the, the disruption dogs, the death dogs. If you go over here, you can open up a shortcut should you die. And I do recommend doing this because it's so easy to die in this sequence. But if you do this, you, you skip having to mess around with some of those other areas, and it can be really handy. But if you get unlucky here, 
Because this monster has a walking damage aura, he can just stand next to you when you're recovering and you can't get out of the damage. And there's a mechanic in this game that's really, really shit. So when you watch a cutscene, the game doesn't pause. It doesn't pause the progress of the enemies, it doesn't freeze anything, it just lets the game play in the background. So if you let anything live while you have to eat a cutscene, it will walk all the way up to you and when you get control, it will be stood bang next to you. If one of those decay monsters is stood next to you when you get control, if he does not headbutt you, you will take mandatory damage and it's almost impossible to avoid. I'm going to have an opportunity coming up here to kill a decay monster, but for some reason I don't do it. It proved to be a mistake, I got exactly what I just told you about, and I had to do all of this again. So when you come up here, guys, once you get past this trap, there is one of those decay monsters. This guy needs to die. Kill this monster. Right now, go in there and just either backstab him or whack him a bunch of times. If I'd have whacked him now, he would have been dead. I don't know why I didn't. I respected this guy so much because I don't like this level. And he's trying to headbutt me too. I got a perfect pattern, but I didn't do anything about it. I should have killed him. He's now going to become a real issue because he follows me all the way up here and at the end of this cutscene, game over. But of course, you're not going to see that because of the joys of editing. But right now, this cutscene of the bridge extending, you can hear his feet walking next to you. You can hear his little shuffle because no one pauses. But there's the bridge anyhow that's extended. There's the cut. And then be careful in this room because there's two of these decay dudes. And then that creature that we ran, ran past, it will follow you. And depending on how aggro it is, depends on how quickly it gets up here. And I got a particularly bad one. He has to die. If you do not kill him, he will shoot you on the ladder. But be very careful of this douchebag right here. But we're good, we're safe. Wasn't too bad. And then once you're up here, you can start unlocking the, the next checkpoint. But we're not quite there yet, guys, so continue on. This is only the, this is also, sorry, the only part of the game where getting to the next checkpoint p feels like a slog. It feels like you lose a lot of progress when you die. And it's just because a lot of this is not very enjoyable. It's hitting walls, it's claustrophobic, it's everybody stronger than fucking you. It's a lot of enemies you've already seen again being really douchey. It's just... I don't know, man. Share your thoughts on this level, guys. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? I've seen mixed opinions. I really wanted to like the end of this game because I think the end of a Souls-like is the most important part of it. You have to bring everything together in your final zone and make me believe the, the pathos of what we're doing. But it's funny too because I think both of the games that came out, both this and Lords, really struggle at the end of their game. This one is a million times better because it's just a better game in every conceivable way. But Lords of the Fallen at the end? Oh my goodness. The person who was in charge of di dictating where the enemies went in that Brahma's castle or whatever it's called, that guy needs to be fired into the sun because he he does not want Team Human to win. That guy is, is with the robots. He's on the enemy team, dude. He's a plant. He's a paid actor. I just don't believe him. Also, in this room, guys, if you go towards that item, one of those wrestlers will drop down and you will not have your stargazer and he can kill you really quickly, so we're going we're gonna to avoid him. But hit the elevator, and then once we get to the top of here, we have to be careful because there's a couple of the healing church members. And those guys, on my build right now, guys, if I get hit by that healing church member, if he hits me twice, you're dead. So you have to be really, really careful here because this guy's going to see you super fast and he's going to come and poke you. See, look at him, he's already aggroed. He wasn't even around the corner and he aggroed. This monster is really dangerous and it has nearly 4,000 HP. I'd just like to point out, Gwyn has 4,000 HP. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The final boss of Dark Souls. <laughs> the ultimate test. But now he's dead, you can go across here and be very careful because they bait you with an exploding butterfly. This butterfly will push you off if you're too close to it when it explodes. Do not be that guy. And then get rid of him. And then just be very careful. Because you're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. You're almost at the point where you never have to see this ever again. And you know the thing that I'm really curious about? What is all this architecture? What are all these effigies? What is all this language? I want to know what all this stuff is. I'm so curious about all these little features. But this level's so fucking miserable to play, I'll never figure it out and I'll never get my answer. 
Is it just iconography for the alchemists? You know, is it just something like that? I don't know. Oh, by the way, I told you to keep the two coins on you if you were talking to the black cat and his sister. If you do that and you talk to them and you talk to them at the Grand Exhibition and you give them coins, when you get here, you can bribe him and you don't have to fight him. I would definitely recommend doing it because it's a shit fight, but because this is a walkthrough, I'm going to go and grab the Stargazer and I'm going to go back and I'm going to kill him. There is one interesting thing about the black cat. He's fat rolling. So when he rolls, he can't turn, which means you can run up to him and backstab him, which is really funny. But he input reads, he has iframes, he has hyper armor, he has all the, the classic garbage moves that all the NPCs do. And the strategy I'm going to use here, guys, is I'm going to bait his attack, and then I'm going to attack him. And when he dodges, which he always will after one hit, if he dodges to the side, I'm going to attack him again. If he stands still, I'm going to attack him again. If he dodges backwards, I'm going to get out of there. That's all you're going to do. Wait for his attack, hit him once, watch what he does, hit him again, repeat. It's that simple. It's just not a very good fight. And then if you can stun him, even better. But be very careful because they read your inputs. And right then, did you see me hold the charge and he tried to do a fast move? He literally did that because I started pressing that trigger. That is a hard programmed counter. That's how cheesy the enemies are in this game when they want to be. And this is why the NPCs are just trash. Enemies are fine, bosses are fine, NPCs are bullshit. And look at that, iframes. How the fuck does he get iframes, dude? Fucking boss iframes. Terrible design. I'll never like it. But that's the end of him. And how much do you get for that? 2,960. It's insane, isn't it? You can sell a fucking Legion plug. Or one of those other Legion upgrades and get more than that. Why? End of the game. It gave me three grand. Why? Why am I getting three grand at the end of the game, guys? That guy should have given me 30 grand, dude. It makes no sense. The economy is busted. Why would you ever kill that boss? He doesn't even give you enough to level. Right now, it probably cost me 15,000 ergo to level. He gave me three grand. A boss! That boss kills me in two hits. Three grand. It's just fucked up, dude. Completely fucked up. I don't get it. And speaking of fucked up, this is the least graceful room in the game. But it's actually quite funny because you can pull these enemies and make them fight a jester. And the jester here respawns because that's not evil enough. But once you pull this lever and you go over here, the jester's going to be on the staircase in front of us. And depending on how lucky you get here will depend on what happens next. So when you get around him and you press this lever, I recommend before you press it, quit out. If you quit out before you press it, you can press it in peace. If you don't, he's bang next to you and you have to dodge him. And uh, as you can imagine, it didn't end very well for Chris. Because <laughs> he, he body blocked me and then he whacked me and I had to reset. But now that we've opened that doorway, we can go all the way back through this zone and we can climb the ladder and get to the next part of the game. But this whole area is just, why? Why did they do this? I don't know. And those babies, the corrupted babies, guys, they now have so many tools to annoy you they're, they're like at the top of the pyramid now. They've become S tier. Those guys can do scorpion get over here and start slapping you. They can do all kinds of paddies. It's <laughs> it's miraculous that anybody thought that that was a fun monster to fight. But they did. And then we get this wonderful moment. And you'll notice I, I got hit up here as well because this area is a pain in the ass to run through. Most of these areas are really awkward to run through. But what can you do, you know? You can be a better player, that's what you can do. You can learn the game, right? And stop making excuses. But if you go for that item down there, this guy shoots you, and it's a really mean section, I think. It's another one of those mean parts of the game. You can see him before you go there, so if he does shoot you, it's your own fault. But it doesn't feel nice when it happens. Yeah, that's what I need to start doing. I keep jumping this at the wrong area and falling down. I did that yesterday on stream, and it got me cooked. But be careful here, there's two healing church members, and they body block you as well. I did two hits there to try and flinch him. This guy's going to do the same thing. Poke, spin, 
I'm going to do two hits, but I can't because he's thrusting, and then I get past him, luckily, and we're okay. And now it's just a clear run all the way up to the hardest boss in the game. There's also a unique enemy coming up here. And he looks really intimidating, and they put him just before the Stargazer, which is a particularly bit of mean design. But he's actually a cream puff. He's one of the easiest of all the carcass you can fight, because he doesn't really have too much. I like him, though, because he's carrying a giant pot. But again, the Abbey is the worst part of the game, and this is literally what I do pretty much every time I play this. I don't fight anyone. And it really frustrates me to do this, guys, because I love this game. I just wish this area was better balanced. And we haven't even got to the area where the guys are really beefy, because there's a, a, a new version of those healing church members who has a fencing glove, and that dude is just so strong. So strong, and it doesn't make any sense because you can backstab him, yet you can't backstab the ones with the capsule. And I don't really like this, some you can't, some you can bullshit. Doesn't make sense to me. 